Episode 5, with the 2016 Bodybuilding.com Spokesmodel Search third place finalist, online coach, professional bikini and powerlifter competitor, as well as YouTube fitness celebrity, Miss Amanda Bucci. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on what I know will be another great episode. I'm your host, Chase Tuning, and this is Ever Forward Radio. Hello again, everyone. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Ever Forward Radio. Now, today's episode is a little bit of a special broadcast. I'm actually co-broadcasting my interview with Amanda Bucci the same day, the same launch time that she is releasing her interview of myself on her podcast called Bucci Radio. Now, I reached out to Amanda probably a couple months ago. We had semi-cross paths when she was visiting DC last summer doing some collaborations with Ape Athletics. We miss each other on that trip, but once I was out in her neck of the woods over in Los Angeles, California over Christmas break 2016, uh, I contacted her, was in the area for a few days, and wanted to add her to my resume, basically, of all of the great people and minds that I had thus far interviewed for Everford Radio. So I had been watching Amanda for a while on her YouTube, on her Instagram, and just really admired, honestly, a lot of her positivity and the angle in which she took her social media accounts and the way that she just interacted with so many different people on so many different levels. She just came across to me immediately as a genuine, down-to-earth, real person who had a, honestly, servant's heart. And the more that I met with her and spent the day with her, really, uh, I could tell that uh, that nursing degree was shining through like no other. I told her I was going to be in the area and would love to go get a workout in, maybe have her take me to her favorite donut place because her and I definitely have a great bond over donuts. And we wound up doing just that. And she made it all honestly about me. She knew that I was the, quote, tourist for the day. She took me to the donut shop brought me over to her apartment for the interview, wound up going to Gold's Gym in Venice Beach, the the bodybuilding mecca. Everybody who lifts, who knows who Da Arnold is, knows about Venice Beach Gold's. And she really just spent the whole day making sure I was enjoying myself. And I know that she did a little bit extra because looking back on it, we had to cut our workout a little bit short because I was getting some exertion headaches, not quite a full-blown migraine, but enough to kind of cut my workout short. And she was like, that's fine. That's cool. No big deal. We'll wrap things up. I'm pretty much done. Went and grabbed some lunch after that, and then uh, went back to her place to do the interviews. Little did I know that she actually was not done with her workouts. She was just obliging me and being very accommodating, understanding, and kind of just letting the new guy in town, (laughs) uh, I guess, have his day. And I know this because I actually went back to her video of that day, and she went back to the gym after we were done. So shout out to Amanda for sending the sick boy home. Her and I just immediately had a great time over the workout, over talking about our mutual new venture, this podcast, and kind of just some other great minds of interest, other people we wanted to interview, current experiences, YouTube, social media, you name it, we probably talked about it. We spent a whole day together, and I have since then reconnected with her while she was out here in my neck of the woods, over here in Washington, D.C., visiting her boo thing. Uh, Her boyfriend is here in Arlington, Virginia, so the three of us met up. Got another great workout in here recently, and uh, those two are doing great things together. And I thoroughly enjoyed meeting and collaborating with like-minded people, and I can tell you that this is not the last time you will hear of Amanda Bucci. We have a lot of similar interests uh, and a lot of mutual friends and connections and goals, really, for this year and the years moving forward. So I'm pleased to give you this interview. I hope that you all will go check out her podcast. She is currently available on iTunes and SoundCloud. I believe she's coming soon to Google Play and or Stitcher. Don't quote me on that. But when you're done listening to my interview of her, please, if you're interested, go check out Bucci Radio and get the kind of the other side, the other story. Go listen to her interview of me. And this week's iTunes review actually is from Amanda. So she was one of my first ever ratings and reviews over on iTunes. And she left these kind words down below for Ever Forward Radio. I have the pleasure of knowing Chase as a friend, and I already know that this podcast is going to be huge. Not only does he have the perfect radio voice, he is a splendid interviewer, storyteller, and has a way with making you feel inspired. 
Subscribing to this podcast will be one of the best things you ever do for yourself. Well, I don't know about being one of the best things you ever do for yourself, but I certainly hope that subscribing to this podcast, this content, this platform builds you up in a way, uh, provides this content, provides this medium that you might be missing. And I thoroughly enjoy everyone that I've come in contact so far for all my interviews and all my research for everything that I tell you or you hear on this podcast. Uh, Amanda, thank you so much for the kind words. I look forward to hearing my interview over on your channel. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get the interview started. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining Everford Radio. I give you Amanda Bucci. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Everford Radio. I'm here in beautiful Southern California with Miss Amanda Bucci. What's going on, Amanda? What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So Amanda and I spent the day together today. We've done some, uh, some fitness We've done some health. Some we bonding. <laughs> we worked out at Venice Beach Gold's Gym. Then we went to Whole Foods. So um, just all kinds of gains, left and right. You got a beer and quinoa. Yeah, exactly. By, by health, I mean beer. <laughs> beer and quinoa. So, um, squats and beer <laughs> and quinoa. That's going to be my new sub-series, just squat, squats and quinoa. <laughs> I'd watch it. I'd listen. It's, all the kids are doing it, the youths. Um, so I reached out to Amanda, I guess, a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah, a few weeks ago. Yeah, so I was going to be in the area for New Year's to kind of just, you know, through the grapevine, say, hey, I'm going to be down there. I had familiarized myself a little bit with her and her story and thought she would be a great interview because of just the nature of how she got to be where she is today, um, what it took to catapult her there, um, what was life before YouTube fitness and uh, being an you know, entrepreneur and doing your own thing and all that cool stuff that comes with that YouTube life, and so she is... Hashtag, that <laughs> hashtag YouTube life. YouTube life. Um, so we're here actually in her apartment in Southern California, and I'm going to ask her to, in about 10 seconds or less, who is Amanda Bucci? No pressure. No pressure. 10 seconds or less, um, I am a 23-year-old girl who got into fitness through bikini competitions. Now I'm transitioning into powerlifting. I do YouTube videos. I make YouTube videos, and I'm coming out with my own podcast as well. So mm, okay. I guess that's 10 seconds, but there's definitely more to it. <laughs> I'll time it later. <laughs> I'll time it later, yeah. So you haven't always been into this YouTube fitness life. You actually no. had like a totally separate, pretty pretty well-defined career path before, right? You were uh, in nursing school. You went to yep. college for that and pursued your BSN. And then I feel like that's a pretty definitive path. Hey, I'm going into the medical career field. What, what was the kind of shift did you from that path to where you are now? When I got into the nursing field, I was applying to colleges in high school, and I was kind of one of those kids that didn't 100% know what they wanted to do, but I had some idea. I liked science, I liked the human body, and I liked helping people. Those were like the three things that kind of directed me towards nursing. Um, And once I got into like my state school and state tuition, it's a really good program, I was like, yes, this makes sense. So I went through the program, and it was a wonderful program, went through all the clinicals and everything, and I knew that nursing was definitely something that kind of like fit my personality and I really enjoyed it. I loved helping people. I loved working with people. Um, and throughout nursing school, like I never really felt that like a hundred percent connection to the career path, I suppose. Like I liked the idea of it and I liked the helping people aspect and I was good at it, mm-hmm. but there wasn't like a passion for it there. Like I, I saw some other people have like yeah. my, some of my instructors, some other people in my class, like I could just feel their passion. And then I, I kind of just like settled for, not really having the passion, but like knowing that I would be good at the job. Um, and once I graduated, I took that and I, I had my BSN and everything, but, um, I guess I can kind of like backtrack and talk about me moving here and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Whatever you want. Um, so I graduated and I moved to California and two weeks before I had moved to California, I took the nursing boards review course, the Kaplan course. And you moved here from where? From, I moved here from Rhode Island. from Rhode Island. So yeah, so I lived polar in Rhode opposites. Island. Yeah, yeah, complete opposites. Rhode Island was, um, I lived there my whole entire life until I was 21. And I moved here to California right after I graduated. And I had every, um, every intention on becoming a nurse, like becoming, getting my RN, mm-hmm. passing my NCLEX, all of that. But the state of California took me took them four months or so to get me my papers to even just say like, yes, you're allowed to take the exam now. And because of that, like I had every intention on taking the exam and passing it with flying colors. I've always been a good student, good test taker, Mm -hmm. all that, but, um, not to brag or anything, not to brag or anything, (laughs) but but just like it, it, it kind of means something when I pass the exam, just because that's not something that like I was really used to. It was just at, at that point it got kind of like, um, 
really, really difficult to continue opening the test taking application and practice yeah. questions and stuff like that. It's like a full time job studying for that exam because you have to make sure that you're hundred percent safe to practice and like yeah. remembering everything you've ever learned. So once I took the test, it was a lot of stuff was out of my head. I wasn't really into it anymore and I did not pass it. And that was kind of like my turning point. Mm-hmm. So, um, shout out to all the nurses out there. Yeah. I'm very familiar with the NCLEX, the prep, the test, um, the BSN prep work that it takes going into that. Even just the schooling. It is not an easy test by any means. No. I honestly, most of the nurses that I know have had to take the NCLEX a few times. Now yeah. there are a few, you know, one and done, you're good to go. But I mean, it is a very, very specific exam mm-hmm. that in my experience, what I've know, what I know about it is you really have to just learn how to take the test. Not so much, Hey, learn everything about being a nurse, which will help you in the real world, right. which seems kind of, you know, ass backwards when you think about it, yeah. but it is one of those tests that just, Hey, learn how to take the test, take it. And then you can move on. Yeah. Like the whole entire review course, you're essentially mm-hmm. learning how to take the test. Exactly, like, yeah. Of course you're reviewing um, content and you're reviewing the information you've learned and stuff like that. But that's like really a secondary thing to just knowing how to answer the questions yeah. essentially. So, um, knowing how to do that was a very big determining factor, whether yeah. or not you're going to pass. So I, I did know how to do it. The information kind of left my head after months and months of mm-hmm. like moving to a new state. Yeah. Um, I was competing at the time. So like I, you I were was doing like bikini. In, yeah. Okay, bikini so I was like in the middle of a prep while I was like studying for the exam. Um, I was just moving and there was mm-hmm. just like a lot going on. I was kind of like starting to thrive in like my fitness career. I yeah. just started my YouTube channel that summer as well. So you had already had some like paths crossing over. So you were yeah. kind of heading down your nursing career, but then you had already started, uh, you're already competing at that point. So right. if you're at the competition level, I mean, you're definitely just above and beyond like a weekend warrior. Hey, I like to work out and, you know, right. make my meals and salads and stuff. So <laughs> <eat> what, salads. <laughs> <laughs> it just, I need the health all the time. <laughs> What was um, kind of like the common ground that you found between, hey, I'm moving out, I'm going across the country, and then I'm really getting more serious about my training, but at the same time, I guess, you know, kind of letting the nursing die down a little bit? Was it right. just because you kind of, were you getting more into the groove of the fitness thing, or were you kind of just forgetting about the nursing world, or, you know, how did you kind of shift lanes in that process? Yeah, it definitely wasn't like a cut and dry, like, I'm done with nursing, going to fitness now. Like, I wasn't like, I'm going to quit being a nurse and decide to be a YouTuber instead. It definitely was not that easy. It wasn't that cut and dry. I'm Um, just going to get 100,000 followers overnight, and that's it. Done! (laughs) (laughs) I just read a book, and it just happened. No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) But I started competing, it was my summer, the summer of 2014. Okay. So I think I was a sophomore in college at that point. So you were competing and still in school. So the first time I competed, it was the summer. So yeah. it wasn't, I wasn't actually Sort of kind of not really. Yeah, yeah sort of kind of not really. And um, I had already been like into working out at that mm-hmm. point. Like I was like the weekend warrior, like yeah. you said. Like I loved going to the gym, but I also liked partying on the weekends with my friends in college and stuff. And um, I was trying to find like a balance between the two. But once I started competing, I realized how much mm-hmm. I loved it. I loved the process. I loved the challenge. I loved how I was able to manipulate my training and my workouts and my yeah. nutrition to change my body. Like I loved it. And by the time I got back to college, my junior year, I was definitely like really, really struggling to find the balance between like, I want to make my friends happy. I was kind of one of those people pleasers and I wanted tough. to fit yeah. in and the fitness thing was not not a lot of something that a lot of people did. Like I mm-hmm. kind of created my Instagram around that time. Mm-hmm. I forget exactly when, but it was because I didn't want people to follow my personal Instagram and see all the fitness stuff okay, because yeah. people were kind of like judgy. Why is she picking up all these heavy weights? What is she doing? <laughs> Why is she posting pictures of like her abs that she doesn't even have? <laughs> <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So I was getting really into it yeah. um, kind of uh, silently and like alone mm-hmm. because I liked it by myself. I didn't have a community of people that um, also did it. So I, I was – junior year I spent – halfway doing fitness and halfway like mm-hmm. having fun and stuff and then it's like one foot in both worlds kind of yeah, yeah. and like obviously still doing school as much yeah. as I could yeah. um, not, not as much as I could like I was like 100% like a student number one and then fitness was like mm-hmm. pretty much number two for the most part and uh, yeah it was kind of trying to find that balance um, so with that I was competing and I had done a couple of shows throughout college and the more that I did it the more that I just got really into it and I really started to enjoy it and I was getting more serious about it. Yeah. Um, so when I started to get more serious about it, my following started to grow Okay. on Instagram mostly. Like I yeah. started with Instagram. Um, I didn't really, I, I honestly never watched YouTube videos before I started making videos. Oh, like I was not, interesting, yeah. people in Rhode Island don't really like watch YouTube videos. Yeah, like I guess as not far so much, as yeah. I know, honestly, like the people that I was friends with and yeah. like, 
And nobody, nobody talked about YouTubers. Nobody watched YouTube videos unless they were like... You hear that, Nick Wright? Nobody watches YouTube in Rhode Island. <laughs> the people that I knew anyway. <laughs> um, I, look, I, I guess I just like wasn't in a friend group that did okay. that. I don't know. Yeah, you're not in that world. It was just yeah, kind of you it was just not pursuing even one thing and the, kind of the only one in your group who did it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the Instagram definitely started growing the more that I learned for myself. Um, I was in college, so I didn't mm. have a lot of money to get a coach. So I did a lot of learning for myself. And with okay. that... I took it and like posted the information that I was learning yeah. on Instagram because I was like, this is really exciting. I'm doing this on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm seeing a lot of progress and then people started asking questions. So with that, I started my own coaching business. So I was doing online coaching. I started doing that. And you actually went into your own like book, right? You have like a right. online book, your own like a uh, coaching. E-book. Can you go more into that? Yeah. Yeah. So um, with the coaching, I started that, I think it was my junior year of, no, sorry, senior year of college. Mm-hmm. Um, and people were, again, people were just asking questions and I like, it started to just become so, such a demand that I like kind of needed to start like taking clients instead of just like typing (laughs) emails that were paragraphs long to, to a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. But there was a demand for it. And like, again, like the helping people thing, Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I really want to help this person change their life Mm because my life has changed from fitness. So I started doing the coaching thing. And then that summer I knew I was moving to California I had already you know planned it. it. Yeah. Where did that come from? Um, well, I guess we can backtrack a little bit. The summer before that, I had moved to California for three months for mm-hmm. fun. Um, a friend of mine for asked fun. me, I mean, yeah, <laughs> kind of. I, I didn't really have any reason to. One of my friends was like, we should just go for the summer and enjoy ourselves and like live by the beach. And it was like really just a fantasy land to mm-hmm. me at that point because I was like always in Rhode Island. It was such a small state. I never knew yeah. anything else. I did not go to college anywhere else. Um, and I did not want to go. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't have a job. I, had, I didn't know what I was going to do. It's a big unknown. Yeah. It was a big risk, really. Other side of the country. Yeah. No job. We, uh, have like, one was, friend yeah, you're going to go with. One friend. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So what was that process like of going from the safety net and the familiarity of where you grew up and all your friends and family to mm-hmm. having one person in a totally different state across the country? Um, what, what were you guys doing? Did you come out here and just kind of just... Yeah. Um, uh, so we came out here. We both had some like waitressing experience. Okay. Yeah. So that was our kind of like in to get a job. We just emailed. Literally, we typed in what What are the best restaurants in Los Angeles? Oh, there so you we go. just like found somebody who responded back to our email saying like Yeah, we're hiring. Yeah. Come for an interview. Like the day you get out here. And literally, we drove out from Rhode Island across oh, wow, the country. Geez. And we got an interview like the next day. Yeah. Once we got out here, we just went straight here, had an interview. They hired us. We started working that night. Mm-hmm. So that whole entire summer, I worked six days a week as a waitress. I was just trying to like make my rent pretty mm-hmm. much. Like I was breaking even basically. But um, I lived in Venice and I like went to Gold's Gym. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gold's Gym, the Mecca, we went there today yeah. for a workout. Venice Gold's and Beach. And that was like the first time I got here, I was just like, this is amazing. <laughs> and, Ooh, like so the exciting. weather was beautiful <laughs> and it was just like a perfect atmosphere for yeah. me. And I just felt like I really thrived here. So um, I stayed for the summer. I had to go back for my last year of college. Okay. So I was getting into the fitness at that point, And then I had like planned my move back 100%. So at that point, you were last year of school. Yeah. But you had already kind of made up your mind, hey, this is the route oh, yeah. I want to go. Okay. Well, I essentially, I just knew I wanted to move back to California. But I still had no idea that I was going to just like pursue fitness. So you weren't sure what you were going to be doing. You just knew yeah. that it was not going to be in Rhode Island. Yes. You knew where you were going to be, just not mm-hmm. what you were going to be. Exactly. Okay. And I had still had every intention on being a nurse at that okay. point. Um, but I was doing online coaching on the mm-hmm. side. And then when I was moving, I knew that I was going to be really busy with competing, mm-hmm. moving across the country. And I had a, a clients of my own already. And I knew I kind of wanted to have some sort of way to make money and create an income without having to take on more clients when I was mm-hmm. moving. And I had no idea it was going to be something that would, like, continue to sell and, like, continue to help people for yeah. years to come. Like, I still have people buying it every single day, the ebook. Really? Wow. Um, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So I wrote it in, like, one month, my last my last month of college. Um, it was April, and I had one month left before I moved, one, or, one and a half months or so, like, something like that. And I wrote a 55-page long ebook about how to track your macros. Wow. I'll send it to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's actually, I'm like, it's probably like the number one thing that I'm most okay. proud of. Um, like, again, all the information that I had learned on my own, everything mm-hmm. that I've learned in nursing school about anatomy, physiology, that had okay. all really helped. I just wanted to create a guide for people to just like, hey, like these are the steps. Mm-hmm. This is what macros even are, mm-hmm. like a flexible dieting, IFYM, like that. Um, yeah. And for those of you listening, you're not sure, you know, yeah. counting your macros, macronutrients, you know, fat, 
carb, protein, the things basically that you eat that make up calories, you know, that make up your daily caloric intake. Um, in the fitness industry, it's all broken down to how many macros you got, bro? What, <laughs> what are my fats? What are my carbs? You know, so she found a way who to kind of apply the science and the education she had experienced and the personal process to all these people that were asking questions about the similar process. Right. So you really kind of, you had a different dynamic of not just applying personal experience, but you had the actual, you know, the ed- education and mm-hmm. the, you know, the training on this is how the body works. This is how the body responds to eating X versus Y and things right. like that. So how did you kind of channel that into writing? Have you had any experience in writing before? Or was this um, kind of just I like mean, word vomiting <laughs> out on your laptop? It was or? kind of word vomiting. Yeah. I mean, like in high school, I took like, like AP English classes and stuff. Okay. So like I was a decent writer, I guess, but it was really just more like an informational educational mm-hmm. guide. And a lot of just things that I like started off with just an outline. I was like, I need to talk about what macros are. I need to talk mm-hmm. about carbs. I need to talk about fat, like what they do in the yeah. body, all that kind of stuff. Like really just something that's, kind of broken down into like a dummy level yeah. like not super super basic but mm. like something that's um makes sense to people who might have no idea have no nutrition education at all like that's yeah. the biggest thing for most people like they're just not educated on nutrition so it's just such a scary thing to them to even yeah. like start tracking their macros or start tracking their calories or start with anything it's just terrifying so i just wanted to create yeah. something kind of basic it's just one of those things that you don't know what you don't know so people yeah. who are trying to get their you know feet wet so to speak of hey i'm trying to you know, eat healthier. I'm trying to just balance my lifestyle with my diet and workouts. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you kind of just allowed your personal experience education to kind of just be that springboard for them. So, um, that seemed really successful for you. Yeah. So how did that change things for you in your, your path and what you were doing? Yeah. So, um, that was definitely really successful for me. Like once I released it, it went, it went really well and like it's continued to go very Mm -hmm. well with the more people that start following me and the more people that are interested in learning how to like track their macros awesome. and stuff yeah. like that. It's, it's actually amazing. Um, and I get Snapchats and tweets and messages every yeah. single day with people like, I just got your book. That's I awesome love it. feedback. So, yeah. Yeah. Like every single piece of feedback I've gotten is great. Good. So that's been really, really helpful. And like the fact that I had that and I had my online coaching business and, um, I got my first sponsorship that summer as well, uh, by my supplement company, PE science. So, okay. Um, with all of that was happening in the middle of me waiting for my nursing boards to get kind of cleared. Okay. So that was all happening and like, it was really exciting. I was working for myself. I was working from home. Um, I had just moved to California. So by the time I took my test, I didn't pass it. It was really just like, I had to either decide like, do Mm. I continue to just spend my days studying for the the, the next exam and like continue Mm. on my nursing career? Or do I just kind of say, you know what, let me fold up this chapter of my yeah. life and then continue on the path of my new one. Yeah. So I made the decision. It was definitely a difficult one. Um, family wasn't super pumped about it at first. <laughs> yeah. My mom was like, you really need to, like, <laughs> yeah. like, Not you really entirely, should finish but... what you started. Yeah. And that was like my mom's biggest thing, yeah. but now she's very supportive. Mm. So she does all my bookkeeping and everything. She's oh, nice. My, Keep it yeah. in the family. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. Yeah, keeping in the family for sure. So yeah. she helps me with that. Um, I like, she's like an employee of mine, mm-hmm. so it's great. And yeah, I guess that's which direction we were going with that. So you got that solidified. So once mm-hmm. the nursing field didn't pan out, it was kind of like a, I guess, eye opener of, okay, maybe this isn't meant to be. Uh, you'd already kind of solidified yourself in the ebook world. The right. You had started your Instagram account. You Had you yep. started YouTube at that point? Were you recording? Uh, that same summer I started YouTube. Okay. Yeah. So what was kind of the... the catalyst behind that so starting so you, YouTube. yeah so you kind of started and had your own platform mm-hmm. um what was kind of the drive to go visual um so the the drive to go visual was really the same kind of path that i had taken with the ebook and with mm-hmm. the coaching and with instagram like people just kept asking questions that yeah. i wanted to provide better information for like i was it was just really like i just like genuinely wanted to help people yeah. and writing instagram captions was not sufficient like it was just Oh, those are right. all fast. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, I need a better way to create yeah. something with information. And then, um, I started doing YouTube videos. Like mm-hmm. a lot of them were just like kind of informational ones. Cause again, I was working from home at that point. I still am, but I was working from home. I had just moved to a new state. I didn't know anybody. I really yeah. didn't have any friends. I was kind of a loner for the first few months that I moved here. So I was like, hashtag forever alone. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I didn't really realize that yeah. people vlogged, and I didn't think my life was interesting enough to do that. So I was like, informational video, yeah. sure. And so, what's it like walking around the camera in front of your face now? Now, now I'm kind of used to it. Okay, so let me. What's it like? What was it like then? 
I so the, definitely the, didn't go out in public yeah. for quite some time. I kind of just did <laughs> stuff in my house. I was like, let me just like film recipes and yeah. like, what I'm eating. And I guess like my workouts, I would like hide the camera because I thought it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, let me put a towel over this and so nobody knows. <laughs> it's a brave new world to venture out. I yeah. mean, because, you know, I, I dabble in it myself and, you know, we are around a lot of people who do that, you know, as a living and, mm-hmm. or just a very big part of their life. And to... <sighs> Film a workout in a gym and to film something in your house is one thing, I think, but to yeah. literally just, you know, kind of have this big giant thing in front of your face, just walking around talking into an audience that at that point in time doesn't exist. Right. Um, you really have to really put yourself out there. And so, I mean, that seems like a big theme for you overall. It's just, you know, putting yourself out there, putting yourself out there to, to put yourself out there, especially in um, this day and age of, you know, followers and people with web muscles you know the more you put out web the muscle, more i like that yeah web muscle that's, that's a good term that is i'm gonna take full <laughs> credit for that, that even though i did not invent that <laughs> it's great well it's, i heard it from you it's, first. So. <laughs> it's been great hanging out with amanda because i say all this material and it's pretty much 90 percent movie quotes and she has no idea what i'm talking so about i just think you're super funny it's hysterical so <laughs> when in doubt just say a movie quote amanda will think you're hilarious <laughs> um where was I going with that? Oh, so putting kind of you know, putting yourself out there it seems to be kind of a big theme for you. So with the ebook, with the Instagram account, with the YouTube. So going from a path of, hey, I'm just going to be you know in a doctor's office. I'm going to be in a hospital, you know, mm-hmm. helping this one person most likely to now I have an audience of hundreds, thousands. I mean, for you, hundreds of thousands right now, right? You're mm-hmm. over 100,000 something uh-huh. you know, YouTube subscribers, 130. YouTube, 130. Yeah. That's a big audience. Yeah, um, it's, I, it's I had overwhelming. This, I had this great relation point. So I'm a big concert goer. I love going to festivals and live music. And my wife and I went to this Firefly concert this past summer in Dover, Delaware. And there were 110, I think 110, 115,000 people. And so when I looked around, I was like, oh my God. The, like imagine all of these people yeah. are watching you. Ooh, you know, so for you, if you so see like that in person, in one person, in one place, all these people. So what is that dynamic like? I mean, because I mean, you don't interact with them like you would like a patient in the hospital as a nurse, you know, you have that one-on-one interaction. Now you're interacting with tens of hundreds of thousands of people, but right. you don't necessarily see them. So what is that kind of reaction? Like, what has that paradigm shift been for you to kind of having instead of these ones and twos come into you as far as questions and feedback? Right. And what is it like having this huge pool of people just ask you questions, give you insight, criticize, basically. Right. Uh, because the more you put out there, the more there is, you know, it's, it's ammo Coming for some back people. At yeah. you. Right. So how do you, how do you kind of shift and sift through that? Um, yeah, it's definitely been interesting. Like, the biggest thing for me, uh, I guess, like, the change that started happening was just, like, more and more people were, like, asking questions. And, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I honestly, like, very much enjoy it. I love interacting with people. Like, the messages that I get from people help me keep going because okay. I, I realize that I'm still helping people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess just the shifting from small groups of people and then, like, giving them a response as opposed mm-hmm. to, like, large groups of people and, like, the, the, criti- the criticizing on YouTube yeah. videos, like... Them web I, muscles. I, yeah, them web muscles. <laughs> I honestly kind of take most of it for the most part. Obviously, there's some like stupid troll comments that like oh, yeah. are insignificant, but um, for the most part, I try to take it as constructive criticism. Mm-hmm. And then things that people say in my comment section, like I, I try to genuinely take them as like there's some tr- mm-hmm. truth to this. Like I need yeah. to kind of like look at this and then change something. So there was actually something that happened in the middle of my last prep. Um, I made a video and. If someone were to come to my channel and watch that one particular video, Mm -hmm. I was talking about how I was really tired because I wasn't eating that much Mm -hmm. because my calories were getting lower. And then um, I was showing like certain foods that I ate and stuff. And then I, someone made a reactionary video to it. It was. Oh, so it wasn't just a response. It actually, they put themselves in front of a camera and responded. Wow. Okay. So what was that like? It was called the Manjibuchi promotes violence. Interesting. Yeah, it was very yeah, interesting. Yeah, guys, I fear for my safety right now. She is an extremely violent person. <laughs> uh, yeah, please send help immediately. You just spilled coffee all over your <laughs> Oh, no. I wish this podcast was recorded on video. This is why oh, I should have the camera. Go. Okay, so you can't see this, but I just, I miss my mouth entirely. <laughs> That's pretty all right. funny. <laughs> Anyways, back to me promoting Response violence. Response video, yeah. Um, why are you so violent? Well, I, I mean, like, partially the um, the girl was vegan, so she was upset that I was eating, like, Okay. She would like put the clip of me eating chicken and then she would put like a chicken dying next to that clip after. Wow. Yeah. But like the other part of it was just me um like 
saying that I was eating like lower calories mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And like, I, I shouldn't be promoting that as someone with a big platform okay. to younger girls who seem to think that they should do that same yeah. thing. So of course I was kind of like upset. I was like, no, that's not what I meant. But I just took it as like, that's so, that's so true. Like mm-hmm. one person coming to my video, like I need to kind of make a disclaimer here and I just took it as I, I created an entire video called Bikini Competitor versus the rest of the world. And it was just like, um, I look back at it and it was like a really good video. I just mm-hmm. took what I did or what any competitor would do. Yeah. And then I would com- like, I would give an example of something I would do like, okay, I'm, today I'm doing this many minutes of cardio and then I have to eat this much food. And then I would say, if mm-hmm. you're a regular person just trying to get healthy, you don't necessarily have to do that. So I kind of just took it as a criticism okay. in order to just create better content and more helpful content yeah. for people like more mainstream people that's huge uh, actually kind of reminds me of something we were talking about earlier mm-hmm. um, when we were eating lunch was just you know kind of always being that student of life yeah you know kind of just always having that open mind to i always go back to the phrase you know everything is neutral and depending on how you respond to it makes it good or bad and so to kind of hear that you know you had this person coming at you with like visuals of chickens <laughs> dying seems pretty extreme, you know, to right. most people. But, you know, hearing that you kind of took that as like a learning opportunity, a, a, a moment to kind of just sit back and reflect on, okay, this person saw it this way. Odds are someone else might have seen it that way. So how can I kind of change the way that I present my material to help the overall masses? Because that, right. you know, overall, this seems to be your goal. You know, you want to, of course, yeah. pursue your passion and your purpose, but also you're helping people along the way. Yeah. So how do you continue to help people the way in which you help people really is important. Um, so right. being that student in life, I mean, what is that kind of that mentality had for you since that moment? Cause I'm sure I always, they're kind of called, you know, like aha moments or just epiphanies or whatever. So mm-hmm. I'm sure has that changed your kind of, um, the method in which you present material right. since. Yeah. Like YouTube comments, as critical as they can be, they definitely keep you accountable as a yeah. person. So, um, I personally think they've made me a better person. I, I, I like kind of hope that, mm-hmm. um, just keeping me accountable in terms of like knowing what people might be wa- getting from my videos. Mm-hmm. And then I mean, like maybe like at a certain point, like I, I feel like I've been getting kind of far removed from like when you're kind of getting more into fitness and you're learning more and like some things become normal to you. Yes. Like things that you might, that people who are kind of just starting aren't normal to mm-hmm. them. So, everything's relative yeah everything's relative yeah so what is normal what's the normal day-to-day for you could be you know eons above exactly. or beyond what other people are going through. and sometimes yeah. i feel like i get kind of far removed from that so okay. it kind of helps me to have the criticism saying like hey like most people don't yeah. aren't able to do this or don't understand this or this this or that and i try to just take all that and and rework what i'm trying to say yeah and hopefully just have the perspective of the viewer that's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's like my goal. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it doesn't always come out that way. I'm a human. Yeah. I try. We're all um, learning. We're, yeah. all, we're all new. <laughs> when you when you realize that there's no such thing as adults in life and we're yes. all kind of still just winging it, then mm-hmm. you kind of realize more about that's life. That's so funny. I always sit back and reflect, you know, now, the older I get in life, I always try to like have that perspective of looking back at my parents and other people, you know, and so I'm just like, man, how the hell did they have their life together at this age? And I can barely not burn my waffles still <laughs> as a <laughs> yeah. grown ass man, you know? And so it's, you know, always kind of just having that perspective of, I think just outside looking in yeah. is huge. And so, I mean, fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it for you, you always have someone else on the outside looking in. Right. And I mean, and that's kind of just the nature of the game in this industry. So, uh, how, how do you kind of just take it and roll with it? I mean, there's good, there's bad, there's yeah. ugly, and so other than hearing how it kind of helps you change the channel in which you present material or kind of just a little bit have more awareness, um, I mean, what, what's the point in which you're just kind of like, or is there a point? Like, I'm done. I'm out. Like, this is just too much. Or like, people, you just need to chill. <laughs> like, I mean, how do you, how do you not go off? Sometimes more than, more often than you think. <laughs> you hit I the delete button a lot, a lot people, before you comment back. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. I mean, some days are definitely better than others. There's certain days where I'm just, I don't even care. It doesn't, it's not, a, mm-hmm. it doesn't even cross my mind that it like makes me upset. And then there's some days where I might be feeling down about mm-hmm. whatever else. Um, I have, I'm like naturally, uh, kind of an anxious person. Like I've okay. dealt with anxiety in the past in college and stuff. Um, when I was dealing with the transitional period with fitness and trying to, oh, yeah, of course. that like I, um, I had dealt with a lot of anxiety that year. So having people be critical of me, um, I always try to take it as an open-minded thing, Mm -hmm. but sometimes it still kind of gets to me like as kind of any human would, I hope. Um, so some days it does really get to me, but then the thing that 
helps me the most is the messages from people saying yeah. that I've changed their life. Like I have my Snapchat open yeah. and Twitter and like I check direct messages all uh-huh. the time and like those people I don't think like they might think that I'm helping to change their life mm-hmm. or anybody that they follow, someone who's inspirational to them. Like they're like, Wow, this person really changed my life. Like I love following you. But yeah. like those messages change my life and they yeah. change the way that I view things and if I'm still helping some, like at least one person, that makes me want to keep going. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um Sort of kind of segue. Yeah. Her and I compare notes all the time on podcasts and stuff that we're listening to, and we're both huge Lewis Howes fans. Mm-hmm. And so something that uh, an old podcast of his, I think earlier this year, 2016, maybe 15, uh, he always talks about the prize and the process, how so many people get caught up in you know chasing after the prize, and I have to achieve this goal, and no, no matter what happens along the way, that's insignificant. If I, I either achieve my goal or I didn't. What would you kind of say to that concept, the prize and the process? Because it sounds like your process has been very, very um, tumultuous at times. I mean, mm-hmm. getting putting yourself in a public forum for people worldwide. You were going to college for a specific thing. You moved across country. So your process has been one thing. What What is your prize? You know, what is this process all leading towards? Where are you going? What's, you know, what is Amanda Bucci? What's her end game? Yeah, so um, I really like that prize process uh, kind of topic. Um, it really applies to uh, the competitions that yeah. I've done, bikini yeah, competitions. Course, yeah. Like every single time I go through a prep, I always talk about that at the end of a prep. Like it's not the end game. Like it's it, it should never be like the trophy or the placing or like mm-hmm. what you get on stage. Like it should never be that. And a lot of people get really caught up in that. Mm-hmm. Um, it should be like what you learn in the process and how it changes your life. Um, and that's kind of why I keep competing just because it really changes you as a person, like being really Mm -hmm. strict on something. And, um, the end game is really just finishing and being proud of yourself, like for regardless of of what happens. So I think that's really important to talk about. Um, but the end game for me, like I, I've been thinking a lot about like my five year plan and my 10 year plan and my one year plan. Super adulting. Super adulting. Super adulting. (laughs) Because a year ago today, I was in a completely different spot in my life and Mm -hmm. I would have never thought that I would be sitting here today a year ago. So thinking that far ahead is like, overwhelming to me um as a 23 year old going on 24 in july and like not even close but um it's like it's pretty overwhelming just to even think about like i don't even know um but the end game for me is to just essentially like do what i'm doing on a bigger platform and continue to help more people because Mm -hmm. that's like the thing that keeps me going the most Mm -hmm. um all the messages like i just want to inspire more people to like find that fire that i've found Uh um i feel like there's a lot of people that i know in my personal life or maybe people that have been following me or people that like send me messages that have potential to have that passion in their life. Mm -hmm. And I was someone that didn't have that as a kid or like growing up before I found fitness, before I found what I'm doing now, I didn't feel passion for anything. I was like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Like this works. I'm going to stay stagnant and doing this. And, um, I feel like living a life that's not passionate and not full of like life. Mm -hmm. It's just, it it makes me want to ignite that in other people. Awesome. Just because it feels so good to me that I want other people to also feel that same way. So that's kind of like my end goal in life is to just help other people find that passion for whatever they want to do. Yeah. So setting the right example, um, being kind of like a role model with fitness, but fitness can apply to any kind of mm-hmm. and anything in life, really. It's just about the mentality, you know, yeah. applying yourself. Hey, I'm going to I'm going to set a goal for myself and I'm going to accept the work that it takes to reach that goal. Right. But also being aware that the work in itself is also a goal, you know, having that, that mental fortitude that, I mean, in the fitness industry, it's actual physical work, you know, physical strength, Right. the diligence it takes to get up every day when your body's just beat to shit and you're tired and you, you would rather go do nothing with your friends maybe, but you know, you have set yourself in a place that you don't allow that kind of shift. I, 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 I shouldn't say that, but you know, you experience yeah. life, you know, you do what you want to do, but I mean, you compete, you have made this fitness industry your life. So I mean that you kind of have a standard that you have set for yourself. Mm-hmm. And in a sense, you really only have yourself to keep yourself accountable for that. Yeah. Uh, other than the various internet trolls who will just call you out when you haven't posted a video in like three days. <laughs> 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 Where's your video? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so moving forward, you know, what do, what do you have coming up? Uh, you have a powerlifting competition soon. I do. Uh, so you're in that prep mode. Mm-hmm. Hardcore grind, and yep. so you're. This is your first powerlifting meet, right? Yeah. So you've done bikini. First, yep. Have you done physique or? Nope, just bikini. Just so bikini. I've done okay. Seven or eight. Wow. Bikini competitions. Yeah. You're a bikini vet. All right. Well. Yeah, kind of. All right. So yeah. going from bikini to yep. powerlifting, for those of you who don't know, two totally different worlds. Yeah, completely. Bikini is all about, uh, you know, the physique of the body. 
where powerlifting is all about how much weight can you move. Yeah. Right? And you're doing all three movements, right? Yes. Bench, deadlift, squat. Yes. Okay. So what's that shift been like? Um, I mean, it's definitely been different. A lot of people are really unaware of like what the shift is like. Yeah. Um, for me personally, like after competing, um, I'm sure you're eating a lot more. Oh yeah, definitely. That's, that's, <laughs> Team always that's hungry. probably the biggest shift. Um, yeah. So when you're competing, you're definitely eating a lot less and you're really weak. I mean, for the most part, a lot of it's kind of mental, but when you get mm-hmm. to like those end stages, um, is what really makes the difference between like a regular cutting phase and yeah. like a bodybuilding prep because you have to kind of get to a more of an extreme level. You have to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, just to get that peak conditioning, those few weeks of being more extreme and like your yeah. training, cardio and your nutrition, mm-hmm. that's what it takes to get to that extreme level. Of course, you can get to like a regularly awesome uh, lean level without yeah. having to get to that extreme. But for the bodybuilding stage, you kind of have to like get really extreme. Um, so the main difference is essentially is just like the way that you're eating mm-hmm. and what you're focused on. So when you're focused on dieting, you're lo- focused on losing as much body fat yeah. as possible. So you're eating a lot less and you're doing more cardio and you're more tired and you're more irritable and, um, you can't can't lift anything, (laughs) but you get some more abs and it's, it's, I mean, essentially the mental fortitude that you're talking about, that's like the biggest thing to me. Like, yes, it sounds like terrible, Mm -hmm. but what you get out of it, like it's a 24 seven job. So you're you're not just going to do your training, like powerlifting. I think it's awesome. Like I could say many, many positive things Mm. about powerlifting, but with bodybuilding, you have to stick to your uh, nutrition 24 a lot more structure it's it's yeah. a 24 it's 7 thing yeah. yeah like you have to you just have to do it and there's no excuses really mm-hmm. unless you're sick obviously um so that's like the biggest difference but with powerlifting, um you can put on a little bit more weight mm-hmm. and you can lo- move a little bit more weight and like you're fueling your body to train the right way gotcha you're not fueling your body to lose body fat if okay. that makes sense so um so I'm not focused on losing any body fat. I'm just kind of like maintaining and living and just focusing on my training and getting stronger. Mm-hmm. And with that, I have to have a specific training regimen to continuously get stronger. And you're working um, with a coach. So you have yeah. all this kind of structured and yeah, it's so structured similar still. structure, but just not as, would you we say it's not as tedious or not as, I guess so. I guess you could say it's yeah, not as tedious because okay. like really you're just focused on your training. And if mm-hmm. you're more a competitive power lifter, you might be cutting for a weight class or something yeah. like that, but I'm not cutting for a weight class okay. or anything. So, okay. Yeah. Very cool. So kind of in conclusion, I always go back to combination of passion and purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the premise of Everford Radio, finding these people who have this catalyst moment that kind of set them on the path that they're on, but also kind of a definitive moment or experience that allowed them to combine their passion to the purpose. And it's kind of funny, you were talking about how you felt like for so long you didn't really have a passion, but you were kind of building one. For a long right. time, you know, you were starting to work out. Exactly. So you, your passion was there and it was just kind of rising to the top. And then through certain experiences, you were able to align that with a purpose. Right. So your passion, your purpose is... I actually have a video titled that on YouTube. Ooh, I did not know that. I, <laughs> so <laughs> no, this would be, okay. this would be a perfect segue. It's like into, a year ago one. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so maybe talk about that. You know, how yeah. did you... How were you able to combine that passion and purpose and maybe what would you say to others who are struggling with what is my passion, uh, what is my purpose, or I feel like I'm passionate about something? Uh, To me, there's a difference between the two Mm -hmm. and very few people will have the ability to... There's a difference between passion and purpose. and purpose. I feel like you can be passionate about something and not apply it to a purpose. Right. Or you can be purposeful but not really passionate about what you're doing. And so there are very few people that I feel do a great job of meshing that. Right. And so how, what would you say to others that are trying to combine that passion and purpose as far as um, your personal experience in achieving that? Yeah, so um, me finding my purpose, like you said, like mm-hmm. I was kind of building it up and not really knowing it. Yeah. And then finding the passion and combining it with my purpose was essentially just through the social media, fitness, YouTube type thing. And I realized like how I can create my passion and create a kind of living out of Mm -hmm. it. Um, And the purpose, of course, has to kind of come back to like you making a living off of what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, mean, that's an important thing to remember. At the end of the day, people, you know, especially you see people on social media, YouTube, and not to interject, apologize. No, that's okay. um, I mean, it's a very important thing to remember that, hey, I love doing this, but I love it so much. I'm not pursuing anything else in life yes. that could make me money that, you know, could pay the rent, could put food on my table. Right. So, I mean, uh, that's something that always gets brought up, you know, people just with the YouTube money, whatever. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you want to pursue your passion, apply it purposefully, but at the same time, Hey, you gotta, you gotta put a roof over your head. Yeah. You know? Like you have to live of course. And like, um, 
<clears throat> like I could do a regular job, like a nursing job mm-hmm. and like live and then also do this. But this is like what I'm so passionate about that I want it to be what I do all day, every day. Right. Yeah. And that's kind of like why I decided to switch paths mm-hmm. and like continue to do this. Um, but I mean, finding that is definitely difficult. And I feel like a lot of people really, really struggle with figuring out like what that is and how to make yourself mm-hmm. like make a living out of it. But I always just kind of say, advice to people is put yourself in the situation to be successful. So even if you don't know how exactly to go about doing it, just keep putting yourself in situations that will potentially like have give you better networking opportunities Mm -hmm. or like better relationships with people or just don't keep your like mean face on at the gym and like kind of just be more open to people and put yourself out there. Putting yourself out there is huge Mm because if you're just going to continue to be closed off, um, you might not meet someone that could give you an opportunity or like yeah. create opportunities for yourself. So um, you, you might know, not. You never know which bridge you could be burning. Yeah. yeah. Or which bridge you could just not be building that could get you to where you want to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I kind of just say really just put yourself in the position to be successful, whether that be to um, like move somewhere that might give you more opportunities mm-hmm. or to talk to more people if you're really like quiet or you're sheltered and you don't yeah. want to like put yourself out there. Just like talk to different people and. Um, figure out like what opportunities could be in your field and just like really try. Like just, it, it just, some people <laughs> it just like so don't basic. try. It so basic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just really just like purposefully have an act, like put a plan to action. Okay. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds super, super important. Did you make that up? I might've found it from a movie quote. There's no chance you got it from a movie. No chance whatsoever. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> Uh, well, man, it's been great talking to you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to accommodate uh, myself. It's been great lifting with you. Uh, and for all of it's you guys, it's been like pretty cool. It's been pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. Pretty cool. So you all have to go check out Amanda Bucci. She's on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all YouTube. Of the all just Amanda Bucci? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Amanda Bucci fit for most of them, but okay. website will be amandabucci.com. Okay. Yeah, and stay tuned for Bucci Radio yes. coming soon. Should be pretty close after this release, okay. depending yeah. on when you're releasing this particular podcast. I won't put a date for the release of this interview because I don't want to shoot myself in the foot. True. <laughs> but uh, I am putting it's it out there. It's probably a similar time, yeah. so just stay tuned. Fun projects, absolutely. So uh, I always enjoy surrounding myself with like-minded people. So mm-hmm. thanks again, and uh, I'll catch up with you next time. Nice. Goodbye, world. Adios.